What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender modifier tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to use the array modifier to make multiple copies of objects inside of Blender. So you can use this to create objects along straight lines and then as a more advanced function you can also use this to make your copies fit certain paths. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so the array modifier is designed to help you create multiple copies of objects inside of Blender along a path that you dictate. So you can find the modifier over in the modifiers section, so under the little uh, button right here that looks like the wrench, um, and you can add it by clicking this little drop down, clicking add modifier. So we're going to go find the option for array, we're going to click on it. And so notice when we uh, add this first object, this comes in and it creates one copy of the object and it's at a relative offset of one, meaning the new object it has been placed at exactly the width of the first object. So it gets placed at the starting point being exactly the same width as the first object. And so the first thing you'll notice is you can adjust this count function in order to create multiple different copies. So you can use this to create as many or as few copies as you want. So you can see how you can click and drag this up and down, or you can click in here and then type in a value and hit the enter key. And so in addition, and we're in fix count mode right now, which means you can set the number of objects that you're going to create using this mode. So you just set a certain number of objects, you set the offset, and you're good to go. And so let's say for example that we were to adjust these offsets, you can see how what's going to happen is with the relative offset, that's going to affect your spacing along the x-axis. So as I click and drag this first one, that adjusts my spacing along the x-axis. And notice that you can also give this values along the y and the z axes as well. So you can use this to create copies in different directions like this. And so one thing I want to talk about really quick, and notice that you can go in and you can type values in all of these, but one thing I want to talk about really quick is the difference between the constant offset and the relative offset. So the relative offset is based on the width of your object. So you can see how when I set this to 1, for example, this creates a copy at the width of this object. If I was to put it at 1.5, then this would create a new copy at every one and a half of the width of the object. So on the other hand, if you were to check the box for constant offset instead of relative offset, that just means that your copies are going to be created based on a fixed distance that you create. So notice as I click this up, this is moving my copies out. So let's maybe create three copies instead. But this is now going to allow you to set a constant offset between your base object and your other objects. And so that's just something to be aware of. You probably get a little more fine control using the constant offset, but it's going to be a lot faster to use the relative offset to set the spacing in here. So you can use either one of those. Just know that one is based on a multiplication of the width of your object. The other is based on a distance. And so there's a couple other kinds of fit types that you can select in here. So like for example, we have this currently set at fixed length. But let's say that we wanted this to match the length of something inside of our model. So let's say that we were to come in here, and one thing to notice about this, by the way, is these modifiers live inside of each object. Meaning if I click on this, you can see how I get a modifier that shows up inside of my barrel object. However, if I was to click on this, you can see how none of the information about the array modifier that's being applied to the barrel is in this particular object. This is going to be different. So for this cube, we could add a modifier, and it would be an array modifier, but instead of having the fixed count checked, we would click the drop down, we could click fit length. And what that means is you can now set this so that your copies are going to fit inside of a certain length. So for example, let's set our relative offset to an inch and a half, uh, or uh, one and a half. Notice that as I set a length, this is fitting as many objects as it can between your start point and end point. And notice that this isn't 100% precise, meaning that like for example, if I set this at 33, I don't get a new object. If I set it at 34, I do. That's because this is fitting as many of these in with the length that I've selected as it can. So you can use this to fit a certain number of objects along a certain length. And then in addition to that, what we've got over here is I've got kind of a general fence object and the third option for modifiers that you can find in that drop down is going to be fit curve and so what fit curve is going to do is that's going to fit 
um, a certain number of objects in here based on the length of a curve. And notice how you get a little window in here allowing you to select the curve. Well, what we can do is we can click on the little eyedropper and I've got a Bezier curve in here already. I can select that. And then what this is going to do is notice this doesn't follow the curve. What it does instead is it creates a fence that matches the length of the curve or the curve inside of the object. So what this does is it this makes your array the same length as the curve. And then if you wanted to add like a curve modifier, for example, so you could go into add modifier and add a second modifier and click on curve. And then it's going to ask you to select the curve. So in this situation, it's going to be this Bezier curve again. And notice what this is going to do is this is going to bend this to fit along the curve. But because we used our array function to make it the right length, it fits really well. And so one thing you may want to do is I'm going to close out of this and you may want to set this so that it's aligned with the base point of your line because the distance from your line is going to affect the way that this looks. So the further away from your line this is, the weirder your result's going to be. So like for example, if I was to move this like way out here or way back here, notice that the way this is getting deformed along this curve is changing depending on where my object is. So just be aware that um, the closer you have this to the line or the curve that you want to deform this along, the uh, more specific or exact your result is going to be with something like this. And so we've talked a little bit about these three options, the fixed count, the fit length, and the fit curve. There's also an option down here called object offset. And so what object offset does is that allows you to create a more complex array. So the way that that works is if I was to generate an array with this stair, right now, you can see how I have an option for relative offset, a number of copies, then I can also move this along a line, but let's say we wanted this to rotate. Well, there's really no option in here for each one of these rotating or scaling or anything like that um, because that's just not in here as an option. However, what we can do is we can add an object inside of Blender and then associate those two items together and then we can use that to add additional, um, additional functions to the object offset tool or the, uh, the array tool. And so that, that sounds tricky, but it's not really that complicated once you kind of get an idea of the way that it works. So the way that this works is what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an object into our model. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a shift right click right here to put my 3D cursor right at the base of this object. And then I'm gonna do a shift A and I'm gonna add an empty. And so what an empty is, is basically just an empty item that isn't really geometry. Um, it's basically just an object that goes in your scene that doesn't really affect anything unless you, unless you link to it. Well, in this situation, I'm gonna add a plane axis. Some people add like circles or spheres or other things like that. I'm just gonna add an axis. Notice that's gonna get placed right where my cursor was. Well, what I wanna do now is I wanna go back to my modifier and I want to turn on object offset and I want to use the eyedropper to select my empty. And so initially it doesn't look like anything happened, but basically what's happened is we have now linked our array to this empty. So what that means is that means that now anything that I do to the empty is going to get applied to each one of the objects in our array. So for example, if I was to tap the R key and then tap Z to lock this to the axis, and then rotate this, maybe like negative five degrees or something like that, and hit the enter key. Notice that now each one of these is now rotating by negative five degrees. So you can use this to add a rotational factor to your object. And so the more that you do this, the more, um, the more extreme the result can be. So let's say for example, that I was to rotate this instead of five degrees, let's say I was to rotate this negative 45 degrees and hit the enter key. What you're going to notice now is you're going to notice that these objects are being basically each one of these is rotated by that 45 degrees. And so what that means now is that means you can do some really interesting things with the amount of objects in your array. So let's say I was to turn this array up. You can see how these are all kind of the same height right now. Well, you could add a Z modifier to this 
so that each one of your copies moves up along the Z axis with every copy you create. So you can see how every one of them is getting that rotational factor applied to it. So you can see how you can use this in order to create these different results. So let's take this back and adjust our rotation so it's a lot lower. So let's say that our rotational factor is a lot lower and let's say that our relative offset is a lot closer. So let's say our relative offset is like 0.5 or let's go with one. You can see how now you can use your empty right here to apply a rotational factor to each one of these. So each one of these is getting a rotational factor of negative 15 degrees. Well, not only can you use this to apply rotational factors, you can also use this to apply a scale to each one of these. So what you could do is let's say you wanted this to scale up on the x-axis, you could type in a value of 1.1 and hit the enter key. Well now, if I look at this from the top down, you're gonna notice that each one of these is getting the x-axis scaled by 1.1 each time it creates a new copy. And so you could do that with all of these if you wanted to. Notice how they're getting a lot bigger. And notice that the movement is going to affect this as well. So you can see how where I place the empty is going to affect the way that this that this is created. So you could use this to create spiral stairs, you could use this to create a lot of different things. And so I'm not really going to talk about this too much in this video, but you could also use this in order to create an animation. So we may talk about that in another video, but basically what you could do is you could set this array modifier to a count of zero to start, and then at another frame you could set it at a count of like 40 or something like that, and this would actually animate the creation of these objects um, between zero and 40 frames. And so this isn't the best example in the world, but let's say for example that you wanted like a sphere at the beginning and the end of this object. Well, you could do a shift A in order to add a UV sphere. And then you could click on this and you could use the start cap and the end cap to include a sphere at the start and the end of your array. So that would be more helpful with something like this fence. So let's say for example that with this fence you wanted an end cap right here so that your fence closed off. You could set this so that this post got placed as an end cap on the end of the fence. So you can use the start and end cap to add an item at the beginning and the end of your array. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought was this helpful to you. Did you know you could do some of this with the array modifier? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.